Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of questions I get asked every now and again about how to create a wonderful discus aquascape and also what fertilizers I use, what fertilizer regime I use and any other aquascaping type things that I get involved in with my tank. So I thought I'd try and cover them all in today's video. Let's go! By far and away my biggest tip with creating a wonderful aquascape don't get too close and keep it out of focus. Okay, not really, but something that looks nice from a distance can cover a multitude of sins. I think this tank looks brilliant from here, but as we get closer, you might notice some of the little issues that I'm having with this tank. For instance, a quick sweep from this distance still doesn't look too bad. So as we get closer, some leaves look fine, older leaves look old, but then there are just some plain old raggedy leaves. Now this is something that's crept up on me a little bit in this tank. Um, again, from a distance, it doesn't look too bad. All the leaves are, well, they're kind of fine. There's no black beard algae, which was one of the main things that was causing me all kinds of problems with this tank in the past. But there's just something's not quite right. There are some algae around, but nothing too offensive. It's just kind of generally bleh. It's not quite popping. It's not quite super green. There are some horrible bits of algae on this plant, for instance, as you can see, if it will actually begin to focus on it. So it's not quite right. Now, I know what the issue is with this tank, and I know how to fix it. So, we'll talk you through some of those things. So, while things are off a little bit in this tank, they have been stable for a long time, and I did get it right, and when it was working right, this was my number one weapon. This is my dozing pump. Now, this is something typically you'll find in the marine world. They use it for all the various weird concoctions that they like to use in the marine side of the hobby. But I've used it for fertilizers. So, I've got a two-stage, two-head pump here. This is a Giable, or Giable, um, DP2, dosing pump, two heads, and what you get here is a very accurate measurement of um, whatever fertilizers you care to use, very regularly dosed. So the reason that I did get it very lush and very vibrant looking was because I started to understand the water chemistry, and I can't recommend it enough, I know I'm banging on about this all the time, but water testing. Get yourself a good water test kit, doesn't have to be this one, this is a particularly good one I think, it could be an API test, it could even be test strips. What you're trying to do is record your water parameters over a, a length of time, and I mean months rather than days, to make sure you understand what your tank baseline is, if you like. Once you understand that, you can tell whether or not you've got deficiencies. So I could tell that I had quite high levels of phosphate in my water. Uh, nitrate nitrate was, was not high, but it was never zero. Um, and I was using a fertilizer that had both nitrates and phosphates in it. So I switched to one that didn't have those things. I also found out that I had a bit of an iron deficiency. So I switched to an iron additive as well. I've settled on for my go-to fertilizers from the TNC range. I've got the TNC Aquarium Plant uh, Nutrient Complete, so TNC Light. This is the one that doesn't contain phosphates or uh, extra nitrogen. And then I've gone for the, the iron supplement as well from the TNC range. Really like these ones. Um, never been let down. One of the things you need to look out for with dosing pumps is if the lines get clogged up because some of them can be quite sticky and quite prone to crystallise and just clog up your lines. Hasn't happened in all the time I've been using these ones. So what went wrong <laughs> was that I ran out and didn't notice. So always the weakest link in any system is the human running it. So I ran out of fertilizers. It's been more time than I care to admit since I've replaced them. Um, so the ferch just stopped. That's why we started to see a bit of algae building up up here. And we're going to put it right. So I've got some replacements and all I really need to do is open them up and swap over the lines and then we should be good to go. So why I decided to use a dosing pump was because as I said earlier, it's a really good way of getting really accurate measurements really consistently into your tank. And that's the one thing that I was missing. I would often try and remember to dose 50 mils per week. The human brain, especially this one, uh, it's not foolproof. It does fail every now and again. 
And sometimes, even if I did remember, I would do a water change two days later and remove half the stuff that I put in. So what this allows me to do is it simply it draws in up here and puts it in. So I've got this set for twice a day doses uh, and that happens every day. So I put a week's worth of fertilizers in over the spread of a week. So it doesn't really matter what day I do my water changes on, it's always going to have fertilizers going in every day. And it worked. It made a huge difference to the balance in the tank. Um, obviously until I forgot to refill the bottles, but you know, these things happen. In terms of the dosing pump itself, it hasn't really missed a beat. Um, I used to keep a little dish, in fact I still do keep a little dish, where I would once a month I'd, come, I'd take the lines out and put them into a little tub so I could measure the accuracy. Never dropped, never went into, never put in too much, never put in too little. It was always really, really consistent. Um, yeah, perfect, hasn't missed a beat. You can buy slave units for these, so if you wanted to hook up two, you can hook up two, but you get three and four and five head pumps if you do want to those different things into the aquarium. Can't recommend this enough. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, you can go and have a look for yourself. I think this cost me about £40. Uh, yeah, and like I say, it's not skipped a beat. Obviously, I have CO2 running in this aquarium as well. We've made videos on that. You can go and have a look at them rather than go into it here. But again, consistency being the key, making sure that we've dialed in the right levels. I have a huge CO2, CO2 tank, so it shouldn't be running out anytime soon. That shouldn't be a problem. This should solve all my problems. This getting back to a consistent level playing field should bring the plants back up uh, to really green, really algae free, low maintenance, all the things you want in an aquarium. So it might be a tiny bit of a cop out, but as usual, consistency is key. You've got to get the balance right when you're talking about planted aquariums. I'm very far from being an expert, but this is the, the only time it's really worked for me in this tank is when I have got that balance right and it's taken away all the opportunities for error and getting it right. If you don't want to go down the dosing route pump, um, the dosing pump route even, um, make it as easy as possible for yourself. Uh, try and fit it into your schedule, make it work around you because the easier you make it, the more chance you've got to get it right yourself. Get a little dosing pump of your own, like a handheld one, like this. Then you've got a little bottle that you can fill out. You don't have to mess around with measuring jobs and test tubes and syringes and things. You just know it's going to spit out exactly the same amount every time. You can walk past your tank. Done. You can buy these on my website, by the way. So I hope you found some of those tips useful. If all else fails, just go the lazy man route and don't film too close for a while until everything gets sorted out. See you next time. Bye.